Welcome back to Coffee and Conversation. Uh, Audie is somewhere. Uh, he's been wandering around screaming at me all morning. Uh, he's picked up a new habit. And I don't know if it has to do with the weird mood he's been in lately or the weather or what. But the last couple of nights, he has decided that a cat would really be much more comfortable sleeping on top of me instead of next to me. So that's what he's been doing the last couple of nights. He'll curl up next to me, he'll purr, he'll settle in, and then as soon as I think he's fallen off to sleep, he gets up, climbs on top of me, and says, well, I'm going to sleep here tonight. It's like, oh, well, that's fun. And he's done this for two nights in a row. This is brand new. He likes sleeping next to me. He likes touching me. He likes being able to stroke me with his tail. Or he likes being next to me so that I can pet him. But this whole, I'm just going to mush you down until you are soft and squishy and I have a new mattress. This is new. Not sure I like it. But he is wandering around somewhere. He will probably show up. So, scarf. Today, I've got my hair tied up because of what we're going to be doing in the video. But as you can see, I hope you can see, the yellow is all in the scarf. And that's our yellow for today. And it is for Catherine. It is for Lex's mom. It is for everyone battling cancer. And we wish you all the very, very best. And when I get a little further along on my project, I will probably be able to take this down and not worry about getting mess all over myself, but we'll see. So we're going to take a look at the intro. We're going to come back. We're going to get to work. So, I did a dumb thing last week. Um, I went out and mowed my lawn. That part wasn't dumb. The part that was dumb was I hadn't mowed my lawn in a while. I have somebody who comes over and does it. But I really, really felt like I needed a little bit of exercise. And I also needed to get out there and make sure I knew what was going on in the yard, that everything that was supposed to be getting done was getting done. Anyway, it's not the end of the world. I have a third of an acre. Now, for those of you who, like me, grew up in the city, I know you're thinking a third of an acre, you can raise corn and cattle and whatever on that land. Because for a city kid, that is like the vast prairie. For people who are more familiar with rural or even suburban life, third of an acre is nothing. But as I say, it's the vast expanses for someone who grew up in Boston. So got out there, did it. Ordinarily, what I would do when I was mowing my lawn every 10 days, that's about how often it needs to be mowed in the summer, is I would simply wear my running shoes. But like I say, I haven't done it in a while. So, I don't know, I, my brain took a vacation, and I wore a pair of house shoes. So, I've got them right here, and yeah, I wore a pair of light-colored house shoes on top of that. Now, this is a pair of Mini Tonka loafers. I didn't pay a great deal of money for them. I got them on sale, $35. It's not the end of the world if I have destroyed these things, but... Oh, here, let me show you. Gosh, they're so comfortable. And because I don't have much in the way of light-colored shoes like this, it would be a shame if I lost them because they have a sole. And this is a decent sole. I could wear them to the grocery store. I wouldn't wear them to tea with the queen, but I could certainly wear them out and about. They are not 
they are not meant necessarily to be house shoes. It's what I use them for. So anyway, in case you haven't noticed, they are grubby. And there is a, like, seriously green tinge to them from the wet grass. So, when I got back in, my first thought was, oh, these are toast. I mean, they're still going to be fine house shoes, but I should probably set them aside and save them for wearing outdoors and doing gardening because I, I don't know how it is with the rest of you folks. Some people come into their houses, they take off their shoes, they walk around barefooted. Oh, Lord love you if you want to do that. But I got a cat. And having your cat means your floors are never quite as clean as you think they are. And also, I like my socks as much as I like my shoes, and I'd rather not ruin them by wandering around the house in my socks. Okay, so I know too much information. But I guess the bottom line is, whatever shoes I'm wearing around the house, I want them to at least be presentable enough so that if I have to go out somewhere and don't have time to change my shoes, I'm not humiliating myself. I would be humiliating myself. So we are going to talk about cleaning these. And as I mentioned, these are deer skin. So they get cleaned a little, a little differently than most shoes. And we start with this stuff. And this is saddle soap. Oh, very specifically, saddle soap. And you have to be cautious with this. And here's why. This is what the saddle soap looks like. This is also almost exactly what my shoe wax looks like. Because I keep shoe cream to hydrate and, you know, like, keep the color consistent on my shoes. But if I want to shine them, which I usually don't, I will use a wax and it looks just like this. So when I get saddle soap and wax, I make sure they are in very different looking containers. The wax container is larger. This is black. The wax container is yellow. Um, only because I've done this dumb thing and made the mistake before. So this is number one, saddle soap. Number two on our list of tools is this. This is a cleaning slash polishing brush. I have, I don't know, four or five of these. I have never gone out of my way to buy one of these. I get them when I will buy like a set of shoe creams. Sometimes they'll throw in a little free brush or, or when I get a large um buffing brush, you know, a shoe shine brush, you know, the long rectangular ones, they might throw in one of these too. So even though I've got a bunch of them, I've never specifically purchased them and they're awfully handy. So I'm always glad to get them. Okay. So that's number two. Number three, this is just a cup of water here. Let's see if I can get that so you can see. Yep. Water. And four. This is not ordinary paper towels. So we've got a roll of extra heavy duty paper towels. I get these at Walmart. And like I say, it's not ordinary paper towels. I pay about three or $4 a roll for these. A lot of people will tell you the best thing to use when you are polishing shoes is a nice cotton cloth. Well, I am going to tell you that once you get shoe polish on it, eventually you're just going to have to throw it away. The idea of throwing uh, a cloth that's covered in shoe polish into your washing machine with anything else at all, I mean, even other rags, is, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't want that stuff accumulating on the inside of my washing machine. Uh, I just, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And the idea of getting a bucket of water and hand washing shoe polish rags. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. So I got tired of going out, buying rags, 
using them a few times and then throwing them away. That just seemed remarkably wasteful to me. I used to be able to get something that, oh gosh, they were called handy wipes and they were like a woven paperish product, halfway between a paper towel and uh, like a, a rag. They did well, but these paper towels do just as well because they're very strong and sturdy. So I decided I would give these a try. I'm, I'm happy with these. I, I definitely am. And my second choice would be those handy white products. Will I ever go back to cloth rags for my shoes? No, no, absolutely too much mess and too wasteful because even for rags, using something for no purpose other than polishing your shoes and maybe every three or four polishes the rag goes into the trash. That's just, I am too much my mother's daughter to do something like that. So that is number four. And what we are going to do is make an effort to clean these. It would have been so much better for me if I had simply happened to have a darker pair of shoes on when I decided to go yard mowing. So I just dipped my brush into the water. Now here I'll show you. Brush in water. I'm getting water on this. Now I don't want to get too much water. You know, I tap out the excess and then I'm just going to make a bunch of suds. Let's see if we can get that going so you can see the sudsies here. Oh yeah, how nice. And my hand is in the shoe and I am just scrubbing. What my goal is here, I need a little more water on that. What my goal is here is not to saturate the shoe, but to get a nice lather. Uh, now, if I do saturate the shoe, remember this is deer skin and also they're moccasins. These are not fancy dress shoes, by the way. You can do the same thing with fancy dress shoes. Although, if you've got dress, grass stains because you were mowing your lawn in your fancy Prada high heels, you got bigger problems than this. So it's just a question of sudsing it up. Oh yeah, let's just get that going. And I'm concentrating on the area here near the sole line because, you know, given the nature of what I did, that's where most of the damage and the discoloration is. And I'm not sure, see, it's hard for the camera to pick this up, but the, the green tint from the grass is just so obvious when you see these in person. And I'm not really sure how obvious it is, you know, when you're looking at it on the camera. So I get a nice lather going on this because I am relying on this. Uh, the way soap works is soap um, is like a dirt releaser. You get soap in and it breaks the mechanical bond that the bits of dirt have with your fabric, your leather, whatever else your dirt is on, your skin even. So if you consider soap to be essentially mechanical. You won't go far wrong. So I am just scrubbing this stuff in. I want to make sure that, you know, I get a good lather all over it. Um, my hand is inside the shoe and I can absolutely tell you that the moisture is not getting to the inside of the shoe. It's staying very much on the surface, which is good. That's what I want. So, this back area is especially green. I'm not sure if it looks more like Kermit the Frog or the Incredible Hulk, but it definitely does not look like what it's supposed to look like. All right. We don't have to rinse this. Saddle soap has a lot of uh, lanolin. Well, this one in particular, the one I use, has a lot of lanolin and oils, uh, all kinds of goodies in there that when you scrub it into your shoe, 
it does a really good job of hydrating. Whoa. I surprised myself there. Does a really good job of hydrating the shoe. And you're not going to wash it off. You're just going to wipe it off. Uh, because it's okay to leave this soap residue. And that's why you know saddle soap is used and not like ivory liquid or Dawn or actually Dawn is my favorite go-to uh, soap for cleaning anything that needs to be cleaned because it's a great grease cutter. This stuff is just loaded with natural greases that I would just as soon got to stay on my shoe. All right, so here we go. And this, I think we got a little suds there on the stitch line. Okay, so here is the shoe. That's what it's supposed to look like, by the way. Let's see if you can see the difference. All right, this is the one I've just cleaned. This is the Grubster shoe that has not been cleaned yet. So, yeah, I think you can see a definite difference. And so that's what I am doing today. Now, I am going to scrub up the other shoe. I'm going to set them outside. It's a beautiful sunny day. So I'm going to set them outside for maybe 20 minutes or so just to make sure that, you know, they're dry. They feel pretty dry at this point, but we're going to do something afterward to this. So anyway, let me just put that back up so that you can see the before and after. Uh, yeah, I have to say I am surprised. I really thought these were, these were going to be relegated to, you know, a little box like out on the porch. Where do you keep your outdoor shoes? You know, I have a little shoe rack next to the door that I don't use for shoes and maybe I should, but that's where I thought these were going to end up, you know, consigned to the outdoor only grass cutting shoe pile. So we will be back. Okay, back again. Uh, scarf is no longer around my hair because I don't have to worry about splashing saddle soap all over myself. And here, as you can see, we've got plenty of yellow in the scarf. I brought the shoes out. Horse trailer. I don't mind those. I really don't. Um, Audie likes the horses and sometimes He'll go over. Jane's yard backs up to a section of the horse pasture. The actual horse farm is about half a mile up the road, but they have a lot of pasture. So Audie will sometimes go out and sit on Jane's side of the fence, you know, where he's safe, because Jane's his buddy, and just watch the horses. So I love it when the horse trailers go by, because I know it's entertainment for my cat. Okay, so... Scarf, oh, four in hand knot, that's all this is. And the shoes were outside uh, for only about maybe an hour. I didn't really need to leave them out to dry. I could have put them on the kitchen table or something, but I wanted to see them in the bright sunlight because the surface is textured and that grass had gotten into every little nook and cranny. It's the advantage of using a brush instead of a rag to clean your shoes. Uh, oh, and when I put the saddle soap away, I stopped and got this. This is the shoe wax. And this is what I mean when I say it looks very much like the saddle soap, but the packaging is different. And also the size is different. So I'm not inclined to make mistakes. Okay, shoe, shoe cream. Now, if you'll notice, I'm gonna hold these up together. The shoe cream is not exactly the same color as the shoes. I really should get something that 
resembles that color a little more closely. This is called beige taupe. The shoes are called champagne. Who knows? But given the fact that it's not going to alter the color all that much, I'm not too worried about it. Ordinarily, when you're using a shoe cream, you want to get reasonably close, but you don't really have to get a dead-on match. You know, this will, most of this is going to buff off, but this will be enough to replace any color in the NYX. Ah, motorcycle now. Uh, and there are NYX, let me see if you can see this, um, where are we, right here. It's a NYX, a little break in the shoe. As I say, uh, these are my bumming around the house shoes. So yeah, and we're going to just throw a little cream on it. I ordinarily do not wax my shoes. Some people do that. Uh, men do that. Uh, and in fact, the reason I know how to do that is, you know, from doing my brother's shoes. And I was the oldest. And as a consequence, whenever I would watch my brothers polishing their shoes, I would invariably grab the shoe polish and the shoes, tell them they weren't doing it right, do it for them. And because I was doing it for them, they would just very meekly walk away when I said, you're doing that all wrong. And they'd let me do it. So yeah, less work for them and that is how I learned to polish shoes. I often wondered how they made out when they went into the service and finally had to polish their own shoes. I don't even know what that was. Yeah, they had to eventually polish their own shoes. Meanwhile, I had all the experience and And they didn't. So, just rubbing the cream into the shoes. Uh, the reason you're going to want to use a shoe cream is because it hydrates the leather. So, in addition to adding bits of color here, uh, let's see, where are we? Can you see it? There we go. There's another nick in the shoe. In addition to helping to disguise that, color it up. Uh, it hydrates the leather and you'll get a lot more life out of your shoes. And this particular cream doesn't really do too much in terms of altering the color. As long as you're reasonably close, you should be fine. Now, the saddle soap, all by itself, will be enough to provide a lot of hydration. But as I showed you before, these shoes, these are, I mean, it's, it's like glove leather. So they're extremely soft. Um, best $35 I've ever spent. And now I'm going to set this aside. And I'm only going to need to let this dry for about five minutes or so. And once again, this is one of those uh, extra sturdy paper towels. That junk on it, goodbye. Just goes right into the trash, and I really don't have to worry about it. Um, and yeah, I am never going back to cotton rags. Not happening. All right. We're going to take a few minutes. I'm going to let these dry and I will be back. So isn't editing wonderful? Uh, I just let like five or 10 minutes pass. And now shoe, brush. This is the fun part. This is also the easy part. Uh, this is all I ever actually do to my shoes. Like I say, I don't wax them. I don't want that parade shine. I, I don't really want a shine at all. I want just, I want a sheen and not a shine. And uh, 
Not even all that interested in Charlie. We'll take Martin instead. More my generation. All you have to do then is just buff. And what the brush is doing is it's getting rid of any of the excess shoe cream. And it's just bringing up a nice little soft shine. Nothing... Nothing like spunk-eyed or anything like that. That's, as I said, it's not what I'm going for. However, what I will say is if you have shoes, let's say you have a pair of shoes like this, and you really like the look of patent leather. Now, this particular shoe, obviously, is not the sort of style that one would get in a patent leather. But if you did want uh, that patent leather look, you could get it simply by popping on a little shoe cream, which you should do first, because again, you want to hydrate your leather. And this is more about care and cleaning than uh, the appearance. Well, okay, I can't say it's more about care and cleaning than the appearance. If you're shoes are clean and cared for it, they will look good. But I'm not trying to alter the appearance in any way. If I did want to, uh, wax. And you can get what I would consider to be a very, very good version of patent leather. And if you're interested in that, there are videos all over YouTube Generally speaking, they are in the men's, um, <sighs> Gentleman's Gazette, Kirby Allison, they, both of those channels do, um, shoe care, and they'll show you how to get a really sparkling shine. And the thing about patent leather is that when, um, when they came out with patent leather, it was to create an artificial version of that parade shine. Um, any of you have ever been in the military, or if you've had loved ones in the military, you know their shoes are not patent leather. But I challenge you to prove that by seeing them when they are all spit shined up for, you know, full dress because wax will give you that same high gloss shine that you would see from patent leather. But patent leather comes from a chemical process uh, where they put a coating on the leather. There's no need to do that. You can do that with wax, which is going to waterproof your shoes. And frankly, given the fact that wax is very easy to remove, it's probably a much better choice. So, as I say, this is the fun part for me. And all I'm using is the brush. The brush gets rid of any of the excess cream that got into the cracks and crevices. And you get a nice soft shine. So, here are the shoes. And these are, in fact, the same shoes that this morning, that's how recent it was, this morning, I was saying to myself, ah, I got to go put them in a box and leave them outdoors because they are green from grass and I'm never going to be able to wear them around the house again because what if I have to go out somewhere with green shoes? So I thought I would just share the whole process with you, in part because I enjoy polishing shoes. I know. It sounds very, very crazy, but as I say, I grew up with brothers, um, and yeah, I was the oldest, and I was the boss, no question about that, and I never hesitated to tell them when they were getting something wrong, and I never hesitated to take over these jobs myself, and I got to really liking it. It was pleasant for me. And a few weeks ago, we talked about stuff you can do when maybe you're feeling anxious or you have a little excess energy and whatever. Uh, for me, as I know it was a couple of weeks ago, because we're in the middle of June now, the anniversary of my father's death comes at the end of May. And Memorial Day comes at the end of May.
So for me, that's usually the double whammy. Um, it's like my father's um, anniversary of his death, along with the holiday, because he served in the Second World War. It's a holiday we always celebrated as a family. So yeah, it's kind of my double whammy. And that's the time of year when I can get hmm, a little emotionally unsettled. And that's when I made that video saying, this is what I do to burn off a little excess energy. It's productive. It calms me down. Uh, a lot of the, the reason it calms me down, of course, is it goes back to my childhood. It goes back to something I enjoyed doing that was useful. And, of course, the fact that I was showing my brothers up, that just added to the joy of it. But because I had to do this anyway, I had to salvage a pair of pretty badly stained shoes. I thought you might appreciate that walk through the process. It's very easy. Um, and everything that I, no, actually not everything. I, one of the shoes I scrubbed off camera. Other than that, the waiting time is the only other thing that, um, that was done off camera. Oh, and the brush. When I, uh, set the shoes out to dry, I washed out the brush and set that out too. People can be really, really funny about their shoe brushes, and I, I know I can. And this is my saddle soap brush. As I say, I have a lot of them, but interestingly enough, the wood tones of the brushes are all different, and it makes it pretty easy for me to tell them apart. But I have been thinking of getting a permanent marker and just, you know, writing an S on the back of this one, so I'll know it's my saddle soap brush. But when when you are through with your brushes, it never hurts to wash them off. This one, uh, I probably only wash this out maybe once a year. This is the brush I use for lighter shoes. Uh, so tans, beiges, light browns. I have another one uh, that, that has a darker handle. And it's actually a little shorter too. And that's the one I use for like black and navy. And so that means that I'm not really ever transferring nasty color from one shoe to another. If I were to buff down these shoes using the other brush, the one for black and navy, I might end up with streaks on it. But I don't Honestly, I don't wash these brushes out very often. The smaller brushes, because they are basically designed as applicator brushes, these get washed all the time. They get washed after every use. So, saddle soap, hey, why not? It's already soaped up. Washing it is nothing more than running it under water to rinse off the saddle soap. But, yeah, there we go. There is our project for today. Can you clean your shoes yourself, even if they're leather, even if, you know, even if they're house shoes, even if they've got all this stitching you have to get in around? Yes, as long as you have the right equipment. And the key is saddle soap, which uh, you can get usually for about $10 a tin give or take. Uh, you can get much, much more expensive products. I would say that unless you are dealing with the, the hugely expensive, custom-made men's shoes, don't really worry about it all that much. You know, as long as you're using a decent quality saddle soap, you know, not the lowest end, do you really need to go up to the Saphir? No, no. I have severe soaps and cleaners and shoe creams in my shoe box. Of course I do. Is there that much of a difference? Not that I've ever detected. If I were dealing with bespoke men's brogues, yeah, maybe I would. Maybe I would just stick with the truly high-end uh, polishes. 
but for the most part, no. It, it's just not worth it. Also, do keep in mind that your average shoe cream, this one, for example, is probably around $10. This is Kelly's. I have Saphir. I have them from Foot Fitters. Uh, the wax is Lincoln, which is a brand that's been around forever. I remember this from my childhood. Uh, as long as you're dealing with reasonably decent quality products, you go in, you read the labels and make sure that they've got lanolin and paraffin and the other things that you want to be putting on your shoes and not a list of chemicals that you couldn't pronounce even if we gave you a dictionary. You should be fine. But this at $10, the Saphir polish I have, I think was $21. So it's twice the price, but even at that, it was only an $11 price difference. So if you're considering getting higher quality products, the price bump is just not going to be that much. You know, I mean, we all throw away 10 bucks on foolishness all the time anyway. So yeah, don't be afraid to indulge, but do you have to? Absolutely not. So, whole bunch of shoe care, and yeah, I will be putting my running shoes on the next time I go out and mow the lawn. So, our takeaway from this, don't go out and mow the lawn in shoes that you care about. You know, make sure it's your, it's your running shoes. Well, in my case, my running shoes are shoes that I do wear, but I only wear them at 5 a.m., when nobody sees me. And the cat sees, sees me and that's it. And even if somebody sees me on the street, it's too dark for them to notice if my shoes have a green tinge. So yeah, the takeaway is if you're going to mow your lawn, put on your grubby, you know, running around on the street shoes. Don't do it with your house shoes. Certainly don't do it with your fancy Prada heels. But yeah, that is, I think, the biggest takeaway. And you can clean them yourself. You don't have to throw away a pair of shoes simply because, you know, you did something stupid. Because frankly, I do stupid stuff all the time. And if I had to throw away shoes every time I did something moronic in them, I would have no shoes at all and I would then be miserable. All right, we're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. I hope this is, has at least been a little bit fun and hopefully a little bit informative. And I will see you next time. Meanwhile, have a terrific day.